Hello guys and welcome to another video and this one will be quite a bit different from what you're used to because I'm going to try to explain to you what the regulation regarding autopilot and regarding full self drive is in Europe and what exactly the problem is that Tesla is facing there. But if you're new to this channel please consider subscribing and uh, don't forget to click that little bell icon so you don't miss out on any new videos. But now Let's dive into the new regulation and uh, what problems Tesla is facing. So the document we are talking about is uh, regulation UN slash ECE R79, which is an addendum to R78, which talks about ACSF, which is Automatic Commanded Steering Functions. So everything that regards to auto steering and um, that has to do with a car, of course, that is regulated in that specific document. Now it's a 63 page document. I'll try to condense this for you guys and get the most important stuff out of there. Um, you are going to get some theoretical stuff as well, but I'll try to make sure that we can always uh, work it back to what the Tesla function actually is or the Tesla feature and how it is affected. Now the first thing you need to know is that there are six different categories and they are classified by a letter. So the first one is class A or category A and that means it's talking about a function that operates at the speed no greater than 10 kilometers an hour to assist the driver on demand in low speed or parking maneuvering. So that is for Tesla Summon or Auto Park that falls under this regulation. It's not that heavily regulated uh, but there are a few things that we need to consider there. Uh, I'll come back to that in a few minutes. The next classification is B1 which is about keeping the vehicle within the chosen lane. So that would be regular autopilot but we also have a classification B2 which keeps the vehicle within its lane for extended periods without further driver command or confirmation. So for me it's not 100% clear whether regular autopilot is a class B1 or a B2 because it does hold the lane for a long period but the question is the presence of the driver that is required is that considered to be a uh, driver command or driver confirmation yes or no I think not in that case then autopilot is considered to be a class or category B2 next category is category C uh, which is uh, a function initiated by the driver and which can perform a single lateral maneuver and in the regulation text they already mention a lane change when commanded by the driver so the regular auto lane change on regular autopilot that is a category C maneuver. Then we move on to D which is a function which is initiated activated by the driver so that's always the case which can indicate the possibility of a single lateral maneuver but performs that function only following a confirmation by the driver. So that is definitely navigate on autopilot you do get the confirmation uh, or you do need to give the confirmation to make the move but you uh, get an indication on the dash hey there's a lane change uh, upcoming lane change to follow the route for example or you can pass this car because it is going slower but you need still need to confirm that this is what we get in uh, Europe in uh, the US or North America uh, there is a category E which says the same thing but it can do f it it can do it for extended periods without further driver command or confirmation. So the navigate on autopilot, the lane change there without confirmation, that is definitely a category E. Now Tesla's biggest problem is actually that in Europe if there is no regulation then per default it is prohibited. So it doesn't say that much but it is really difficult to get the feature approved if it is not regulated. Um, so yeah, that makes it quite difficult for Tesla to do that because uh, right now in Europe for category E 
there is no real regulation in place. So we need some regulations there before we can get navigate on autopilot without driver confirmation for the lane changes. Now, as I mentioned, it's quite a hefty document, that uh, R79 uh, addendum, but it doesn't only talk about lane changes or lane keeping. It also clearly describes how the driver interaction should be with the system. So for example, in the text, you also find this when the system is active and in the speed range between 10 kilometers an hour or the minimum velocity, whichever is higher, and the maximum velocity of the system, it shall provide a means of detecting that the driver is holding the steering control. So that's basically your whole steering wheel message. And uh, Tesla has taken the approach of not having sensors to uh, detect the presence of uh, your hands on the steering wheel, but it detects whether or not you're giving a slight counter force because you're not the actual person steering, uh, the car is, and uh, as a result of that, you get a slight delay uh, or inertia in your hand movement, and that should be enough to detect that you're uh, present and you're paying attention. That is how Tesla approaches this. Now, it also mentions that if after a period of no longer than 15 seconds the driver is not holding the steering control, an optical warning signal shall be provided. And I've, I've copied here the optical warning signal options that are in the regulation and Tesla has adopted them literally. So you have the same steering wheel, the same hands on the steering wheel with the text box that now says uh, apply some uh, force to the, to the steering wheel. Um, so that's also regulated. Now what follows next is if there is a period of 30 seconds where the driver is not holding the steering wheel, then the hands should be red and there should also be an acoustic warning, uh, which is exactly what Tesla is doing. And uh, the warning shall be active until the driver is holding the steering wheel. Yes, exactly what Tesla is doing. And, uh, or the system is deactivated either manually or uh, automatically so if you take over you disable autopilot you take over the steering wheel uh, then it is uh, also deactivated of course and if another 30 seconds have passed after that then the system will shut down automatically and there will be another beep another kind of acoustic sound which is exactly how tesla has implemented this feature so they are following this regulation to the letter basically now the first feature I want to take a look at is Summon, because that is quite different between the US and Europe. And let's see what we have here in terms of regulation. So it is an RCP uh, protocol, so that's remote controlled parking. It needs to be initiated by the driver, of course, uh, it's not full self-drive yet. But it needs a continuous actuation of the remote control by the driver uh, during the whole maneuver. So uh, the feature of double tapping the parking button, getting out and having the car drive into your garage, opening and closing the garage as it needs to, that is not possible with this regulation uh, because we need to be in control at all times with a uh, continuous actuation or a continuous press in this thing. So we're not getting that feature anytime soon. If the continuous activation is interrupted or the distance between the vehicle and the remote exceeds a specific maximum or CP operation range, the signal uh, is lost, then the vehicle shall stop immediately, which is exactly what is happening as soon as you release it. Um, and that is the safety feature uh, in case you would have dropped your key fob, for example, um, that it would not roll on, but it would actually stop automatically. That is why we have this continuous press mechanism. Now the specified maximum RCP operating range shall not exceed 6 meters. So that also means that enhanced summon getting your car from the, uh, a place in the parking lot up to 50 meters away, uh, that's not going to happen in Europe because we cannot be further away than 6 meters. And even so, Tesla applies a system where it needs to detect your key fob uh, within range of the car, uh, which is less than 6 meters and only then it will operate. So that renders summon in Europe nothing more than actually a party trick. 
because practically where would you use it in parking garages where you don't have a lot of space a lot of the time these parking garages are underground you don't have a Wi-Fi connection or you don't have a 3G connection or LTE connection on your phone or on the car and that means that you cannot use that feature in those situations anyway so yeah for me summon it's uh, yeah it's it's a party trick and uh, basically nothing more than that and I'm hoping we get some regulation changes that will also allow the enhanced summon to be able to be used in Europe the next regulation we're going to take a look at is the lane keeping and basically your auto steering on regular roads the text in the document says when the system reaches its boundary conditions for example the specified maximum lateral acceleration I'll talk about that in a few minutes here and both in the absence of any driver input to the steering control and when any of the front tires of the vehicle starts to cross the lane marking the system shall continue to provide assistance shall clearly inform the driver about the system status by an optical warning signal and additionally by an acoustic or haptic warning signal this is what we are getting with the auto steer limited so as soon as the car detects I cannot make this turn because of the boundaries that have been applied to my system I'm giving you a warning like hey I can't really handle this within the boundaries of the system I will continue to use autopilot and do my thing but you will probably have to take over at this moment that is what Tesla is uh, giving us and that's also what I've noticed uh, while driving so as you can see in this example here the car starts going to the left in this turn and as soon as it starts going over the line then automatically we're getting the auto steer limited and again on the left side uh, or in the left turn uh, in this S turn uh, again it gives me the autopilot or, or the auto steer limited uh, warning message because it is touching the lane markings so that is exactly what this text is and that's exactly how Tesla has implemented this specific regulation now let's have a closer look at the actual boundaries uh, for the system and what it actually means within this specific regulation so when you're taking a turn to the left then you have the centrifugal force that will pull you to the outside of the curve um, which is represented by this arrow here now the force that is applied to that car is regulated so uh, there's a table in the document that specifies that the maximum value for the specified maximum lateral acceleration is 3 meters per second squared so to round it off that's a 0.3 G lateral acceleration that we can have because 1 G is basically 9.81 meters per second squared so yeah let's take that into a practical example and let's calculate what that actually means so I took Google Earth and I uh, took a turn on the highway or off the highway it's an off-ramp um, and I'll show you that in just a bit how the car actually reacted to that in the real world but let's look at it from a theoretical point of view so here we have that uh, exit it has basically a circular shape so that makes it easy with a radius of 102.86 meters so I rounded that uh, to 103 meters the acceleration is uh, if you took the formula for the centrifugal acceleration um, that is uh, the speed squared divided by the range of that circle now we want to know at what speed can we take this turn because we know what the maximum allowed acceleration actually is that's the 0.3 meters per second squared so we need to change the formula a little bit so we come to v squared equals a times r if we fill that out so the acceleration is 3 meters per second squared or the radius is 103 meters just to make it simple so that means that times 3 so that's 3, 309 we need the square root to have the actual uh, speed and that means that we have a speed of 
5-8 meters per second and if we calculate that to speeds that we are used to working with that would mean that this turn should be legally or according to the regulation we should be able to take it at 63.28 kilometers an hour or 39.33 miles per hour so let's say 40 miles an hour that should be the maximum now let's have a look at this video from uh, a test I did in, in the previous autopilot test where I took this exact exit and let's see how the car actually reacts to that. So as I approach this exit the car automatically takes the exit. Um, Navigate and autopilot will stop here but regular autopilot will continue working. You see in the left uh, on corner of the autopilot screen that the speed is being reduced to 70 uh, kilometers an hour but the car is actually taking it at 55 to 57 going up to 59 kilometers an hour and here we get the auto steer limited so the car is handling that within the boundaries of the regulation but as you saw on the screen on the video um, it is kind of jittery so it's not taking a one smooth curve it is um, actually the car is going a little bit like this right and it's taking the turn in different sections I'm not sure why uh, because Tesla is going uh, all positive on path prediction and, and everything uh, maybe that's a hardware tree issue so I'm going to attempt to get the same route and the same uh, touch points here with a Maven car which should have hardware 3.0 um, but for now in my autopilot 2.0 car this is how it reacts and because it is not following that curve fluently it is touching the outside of the lane and then we get the auto steer limited message so the speed in itself is not that bad for that turn it's just that the way that the turn is handled makes it so that the car is not confident it's not feeling confident but in itself it is not confident and it uh, basically screams for help by telling me that auto steer is limited because it cannot handle that specific section so Tesla definitely has some improving to do there as well uh, and it is at the moment staying below the allowed speed to take that specific turn now if you look at the lane change in itself there are two definitions that we need to go through first so we have a lane change procedure and we have a lane change maneuver so the lane change procedure as you can see here in the document is split up into five different steps so the first step is the activation of the direction indicator lamps by a deliberate action of the driver also uh, the next step is lateral movement of the vehicle towards the lane boundary so you start moving to the left then you initiate the lane change maneuver which I uh, will come to in the next slide here and then it resumes the lane keeping functions once you ended the lane change maneuver and the indicator lamps are deactivated now the lane change maneuver that one is defined by when you start crossing the uh, lane marking of the lane you are moving into right so the tire tread of the vehicle's front wheel closest to the lane markings touches the inside edges of the lane marking to which the vehicle is being maneuvered so you're over the lane marking right you're moving into the actual lane and it ends when the rear wheels of the vehicle have fully crossed the lane marking and then as stated in uh, the previous screen right the normal b1 b2 lane keeping operation will uh, take over again and your indicator lights will be uh, deactivated a couple of limitations are also applied to this entire auto lane change system which makes that we are hardly able to use it in the real world right so let's go over these and see what exactly the problem is and why it isn't working anymore since a couple since of a couple of updates where Tesla has actually implemented these regulations. 
So what the actual regulation says about limitations is that the system shall provide a means of detecting that the driver is holding the steering controls and shall warn the driver in accordance with the warning strategy below. First of all, the car has to detect that you are there. So um, I know that in the US or North America in general, you can just use the blinker and it will do it. You don't have to touch the steering wheel. We have to touch the steering wheel because the driver presence needs to be detected within three seconds after the initiation of the lane change procedure. Um, so if not, then a warning signal, hold steering wheel will actually be provided. Of course, the warning signal shall be active until the driver is holding the steering control or until the system is deactivated and then you also get a timeout. The lane change procedure requires and shall start immediately after a manual activation by the driver of the direction indicated to the intended site for the lane change. This is also one of the issues. Um, so the lane change procedure starts immediately after the activation of the lights. Um, that means that you get that timing which will come to in the next point. Um, that timing starts at that point, right? What should happen to make this um, reliable and usable again is to extend that lane change procedure with a possibility to check for the gaps and uh, make sure that it can wait until the car can move safely into the next lane. It used to do that, but since the implementation of this regulation, it will no longer do that because of this specific regulation that says, well, this is the point where the lane change procedure starts. And then we move on to what is actually the uh, timing constraint that we have on the auto lane change. So the lateral movement of the vehicle shall not start earlier than one second after the start of the lane change procedure. So you use your indicator you turn it on and then the car has to wait at least one second before it even starts moving to the lane. The next point is that the lane change maneuver shall not be initiated before a period of three seconds and not later than five seconds. So remember the lane change maneuver was the actual crossing into the next lane and the changing of the lane, right? So from going straight to crossing that lane so you have to wait one second at least and then you have two seconds to start moving into that lane and once you are moving into that lane that lane change maneuver shall be completed within five seconds so those are quite strict time constraints that are around this and that also means that if you start indicating too soon and there's a car next to you hindering your uh, lane change immediately then after five seconds right you still haven't started the lane change maneuver it will abort but that also means that if you are starting to move into that lane on second four for example and you have not yet crossed the lane markings then it will jerk you back into the lane because you get that timeout and you didn't start the lane change maneuver within five seconds and I think personally this is really dangerous behavior of the car because the cars around you they think well you start moving and all of a sudden you start swerving back not because there is no room to move into the lane but just because of a stupid timeout um, that is just something that is yeah uh, uh, for me that's a dangerous situation also uh, from a driver point of view because you're definitely not expecting that you have room you expect the car to move into that room but uh, yeah it, 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 the first time I had that uh, it really scared me and uh, yeah I, I, it's not really safe so let me put this into perspective with a little drawing that I've made uh, for the different steps that make it a little bit more clear perhaps to understand the different stages that we need to go through so the first step is of course the driver initiating the lane change procedure by using the indicator lights. 
The next step is that the car needs to wait for one second before starting the lateral movement. So it is still going straight, it is not moving anywhere. Then between one and three to maximum five seconds, right, you need to start crossing that lane marking. So it takes at least two seconds to move towards that lane marking and crossing that lane marking. And then you have less, from that point on, you have less than five seconds to complete the lane change maneuver. All right? I hope this is a little bit clear with these images, uh, what we are facing and what the different timings are. So if you look at the specification, then we see that the uh, ACSF, so the uh, automatic command steering function of category C, which is the lane change, shall be able to detect vehicles approaching from the rear in an adjacent lane up to a distance not less than 55 meters. So the system needs to be able to detect cars up to or at least 55 meters behind it. So that's where the side rear view cameras come into play in a Tesla. Um, also the maneuver, right, the, the, the function of category C is permitted to perform a lane change at speeds lower than the calculated speed provided uh, conditions are met. Um, so what that means is if you look at these conditions so uh, the vehicle has detected another vehicle in the adjacent lane into which you want to merge into at a planned distance lower than a rear distance that is uh, specified and the, the situation is not deemed to be critical. For example, uh, low speed differences and uh, less than 130 kilometers an hour. So if you're moving into a lane and you're driving, for example, 100 kilometers an hour, and there's a car coming from behind you, let's say you're in Germany, doing 180, then it is not possible to do a lane change automatically because that car is coming way too fast. Also, uh, the declared value for the rear, so what you need at the rear, is bigger than or greater than the calculate value, which is the S critical. So that's the critical distance at which a car can be before uh, you can do a lane change. Now let's look into that critical distance and what that means uh, practically. A critical situation is deemed to be critical when at the time of a lane change maneuver starting, uh, an approaching vehicle in the target lane would have to decelerate at a higher level than 3 meters per second squared, so more than 0.3 g's, 0.4 seconds after the lane change maneuver has started to ensure the distance between the two vehicles is never less than that which the lane change vehicle travels in one second. So yeah, so you have to keep at least one second distance between the cars when doing the lane change. But it is really detailed because this text is literally from the uh, regulation document. Also, it, they have a formula which looks like this, which seems to be really complicated, but we're going to take it into an example in, in just a minute. But this calculates the distance that you need to have behind the car before you can actually move into that lane. So let's take a look at that formula and see if we can apply it to a practical example. So for example, you are driving at 120 km an hour and want to overtake the vehicle in front of you. A car is coming from behind uh, in the target lane at 130 km an hour. So let's apply the math to this specific uh, equation. So the critical distance is uh, this complex formula, but let's fill in the numbers to make it more readable and understandable for you guys. So we need to take the uh, vehicle speed from coming from the rear minus the own vehicle speed performing the lane change function times the uh, 0.4, which is the distance uh, or the timing at which it needs to be measured, right? Plus the difference between the speeds squared divided by 
the maximum deceleration that can happen which is uh, 3 meters per second and we can double that we add the one second times your uh, actual speed that you are doing the vehicle that is doing the function and then you get um, if you move this into the actual numbers, uh, which is meters per second that we need to work with. Um, so that's uh, 36 meters per second minus 33 meters per second. Um, and we solve that equation. Then we end up with 35.73 meters or 117.22 feet. Now, that is the gap that you need to have between the rear of your vehicle and the oncoming vehicle that is in the adjacent lane. Um, so in, in the drawing below here, I've put this to scale. So that's how big of a gap you need to have to be able to perform the automatic lane change. That is quite big, right? It is a safe distance, right? Because if you uh, there was recently a campaign in Belgium where you had to use a song to make sure that you had the correct distance at highway speeds and uh, they say you needed to sing uh, Last Night the DJ Saved My Life right? that takes about two seconds and they want to have two seconds of uh, time difference between you and the vehicle ahead of you now if we apply this to uh, the last part of the formula which is easy because there you have one second we just have to multiply it uh, by two then uh, you see that you basically should drive at 120 kilometers an hour or about 70 miles an hour I think that is um, you should drive with a gap of over 60 meters between cars and if then you look at this formula and say well you only need 35.73 meters of uh, of a gap with this speed difference of 10 kilometers an hour that seems rather fair no but Tesla has one big problem and that is reality so in this image you're seeing well this is what we calculated this is what you need to have this is a situation that you can safely merge into reality however is that people are driving like this and this is just not the big enough gap that we have so 30 35 meters that you need uh, to work at highway speeds with auto lane change that's quite a big gap and again if the person from behind is coming too fast it will also cancel the uh, lane change and jerk you back into your original lane again making a dangerous and violent maneuver at that point now, as I understand it, these are the regulations for Europe. In the US, I've been told you only needed a gap of about 6 meters. That's basically the length of the car plus some, yeah, like half a meter in front, half a meter in the back. Uh, so that's the tiniest of gaps to allow for a lane change. So maybe somebody that knows the exact regulation in the US can uh, comment uh, below in the comment section to let me know if this is correct. But that seems like really not a lot to do a lane change and I wouldn't want to do a lane change uh, especially not at those speeds so maybe again that's also speed dependent but on the other hand you do need a much smaller gap to work with reality and people that are driving much closer to one another and uh, people not merging into you into your lane before you do and cutting you off with the automatic lane change for example so there you have it. These are the most important parts from that R79 document and the bits that have the most effect on autopilot the way we have it now and the way it is regulated now. Any new features that Tesla is going to bring out, they have to be validated. But unfortunately, everything that is moving closer towards full self-driving, like enhanced summon, uh, etc., that is currently not regulated and for Tesla is going to be really really hard to get approval in Europe to do these uh, things and to get certified uh, as a car to let us do those things right and let us enjoy 
the uh, technology that is available. So that is one of my biggest concerns, especially with also the jerking back into the lanes, is that with this new regulation and because of these timing issues and the gap issues, autopilot is currently a lot more dangerous and a lot less usable than what it actually is. So yeah, I hope you like this video and this clarifies uh, a lot of things for you regarding the regulations that we are facing in Europe. And as always, if you like it, please give us a thumbs up and subscribe using the button below. And don't forget to click that little bell icon so you don't miss out on any new videos. And for now, thanks for watching. See you guys next time. Bye bye.